<coughs> Every time I start a video, I swear, I like... Get a coughing fit. Hi guys, it's good to be back. I took a little hiatus there last week um, as we were going through um, all of the protests and the riots and all of the um, education going on regarding uh, Black Lives Matter and systemic racism and all of that stuff. Um, so I've been really taking a step back to allow those voices that need to be heard to be heard. Um, and I haven't been posting anything on Instagram or on my YouTube channel. So I'm sorry if I completely just sort of fell off the face of the planet. Um, but that again was on purpose so that we could all be spending more time really educating ourselves on what is going on, what we can do to help. Um, and yeah, just being informed citizens and informed community members. Um, and so yeah, but I did hop on my Instagram for the first time in like a week the other day and I did a story and I just asked people like, hey, what's going on? How are you guys feeling right now? Um, I know that we're dealing with all of this stuff going on right now, but it's important to remember that we still have to focus on the recovery and that we still have to push forward even in times where it seems maybe inconvenient. and. Um, times like this can actually be really hard when we're struggling with a, something like, you know, um, an eating disorder, which is a mental illness. Like, this just, like, sort of escalates all these really hard times. It escalates that anxiety, escalates that fear, um, because we're not as calm and grounded, um, as we could be because we're dealing with these other things. So, um, in those responses, I got a lot of people saying, like, I'm actually finding it really hard right now to stick with recovery, and I'm sort of losing hope here. I've been working on this journey for a while, and I feel like I'm still not recovered. Like, what the heck? And I wanted to speak to that for a second because I think we have this idea that you know, we decide that we're going to go through recovery and we want tomorrow to be when we're recovered. And it doesn't happen like that. So I have a lot of people who come to me and they're like, well, I've tried recovery like three or four times and it hasn't worked. And I go, great. I'm so glad that you have tried recovery that many times that you have failed because you know what? That's part of the journey. So you saying I've tried, I failed, I've tried, I failed, I've tried, I failed is telling me you are someone who is actually really truly desiring this because you keep on going back to I'm going to try again. Um, it also tells me that you have learned even if you feel like you are still stuck in the same place, you have learned something going through those times of really like committing yourself to, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start reading all this stuff, you know, about recovery, about eating disorders to help me understand like what I need to do. Um, there is a lot of stuff that you learn through those experiences that will help you on your final sort of journey and step forward into full recovery. Um, so you are not a failure for um, relapsing or for quote unquote failing at your recovery journey. This is a long process. It took me 11 years to get out of this guys. I would say I had a like very strict clinical eating disorder in it, have no idea what was going on, very unaware of the behaviors that I was doing and how it was hurting my body. I would say that that lasted like a year, a year. But yet it took me 11 years to get fully recovered. So what was happening during that time was I was slowly becoming aware of what was happening. Um, I was educating myself on like, oh, okay, my like IBS problems are due to my caloric restriction and overexercising. exercising um, really educating myself on why it was that I felt this like compulsive desire and need to move all the time. Oh, that's because, you know, migration theory. So I read up on all this stuff. Um, so during that time, I was having these moments of like, all right, this is it. I can do this. I'm going to start, you know, adding in butter. I'm going to stop, you know, doing long runs and I'm going to do more weight training. And I started slowly but surely, you know, sort of climbing up this ladder of um, recovery. And yeah, there were times where I went back down. But when I went back down, I took that knowledge that I had gained when I went back up, if that makes sense. So I took all those experiences still with me. And it really helped me the next time take an even larger step forward because I'd already overcome a lot of those fears. Um, so yeah, so it's an 11 year process. I, you know, I first went to like 
veganism. I'm going to be vegan because then I can eat all vegan foods unrestrictedly. And that was like the first step, even though that was still disordered. That was the first step for me to be like, oh, I can eat pasta. I can eat a loaf of bread. I can um, eat almond butter. And that helped me get rid of just in general this fear that I had of all foods. And it helped me be like, I can eat these foods. I can eat them in abundance. Um, so Because I did. I ate... Um, there were times in my vegan journey where I did eat quite a bit. Um, that wasn't the issue. The issue was I was being really restrictive with what I ate. But that helped me, you know, that helped me loosen up around food so that when I was finally ready to take that next step and I finally was like, I'm pushing myself to do the next thing. I brought that experience of, wow, I learned to be okay with eating pasta on my vegan diet. So let's learn to be okay with like eating meat again. Let's learn to be okay with eating eggs again. So it just, it was a process guys and it really helps. Hey guys, I'm just editing this and I just wanted to pop in and clarify something. When I say I went towards a vegan diet and then that, you know, helped me open up to more foods, I'm not saying that this is the best way or the only way to do this or even a way that you should do this. There was definitely a lot of bad things about me choosing to move towards a vegan diet as far as my recovery, but what I'm saying is that there were a lot of things I learned from just that process of trying to find food freedom and simply trying to change things and move towards recovery. So for those of you who have been struggling right now, um, know that it's okay to struggle. It's okay to feel like you're sort of staying a little stagnant. Um, now what we want to do is we want to be aware of that and we want to start like making a game plan for how to move forward. I just don't want you getting so down on yourself because um, another thing that happens is we tend to like forget all of the um, all of the things that we have done. I was talking with a client the other day and she was like, why am I not recovered? Like, it's been a many years now. Like, I should be there. This is ridiculous. And I go, wait a minute, stop. Like, let's spend a moment to write like a thank you letter to yourself for all that you have done in your recovery. Um, she had overcome a lot of fear. She had incorporated a lot of food that she never thought she would. Um, she had made progress and yeah while she is not at that fully recovered state like again honey that takes time um and I really helped her sort of see like okay look at how much you have done though stop getting down at yourself for not being at this like perfect place of recovery that you like are trying to get at which that doesn't even exist and that's another thing with sort of this like perfectionistic attitude and even thinking that like I have to recover perfectly there's no such thing um, but taking a step back to realize like okay where have you come what things have you learned what things have you pushed yourself to do that may not seem like a big issue now and that's why you're not thinking like you've done a lot you're like well I ate the chicken like but I'm not recovered but it's like dude do you remember how like hard it was for you to take that first bite of chicken do you remember how six months ago you were sitting here being like, I can't eat the chicken, I can't do it, like this is my biggest fear food, and now it's just a normal thing? So I think we just forget. So anyway, so back to though this feeling of like complacency. Um, if you are not challenging yourself, you're not changing. So it is super important that we continue to challenge ourselves in our eating disorder recovery because if we're feeling comfortable, if we get to the end of the day and we feel like I like what I ate and it was good and I'm not like putting up a fight against it, then it's like, hmm, did you really eat enough then? Did you really like challenge yourself to incorporate new foods? Um, because if your AD voice is not screaming at you, then I don't know. It's like, are you staying too comfortable? Are you just listening to your eating disorder voice? Because it tends to be really quiet when it's doing or when you are doing the things that it wants you to do. So. Um, really keeping yourself um, challenged consistently and keeping yourself committed and that goes down to really knowing your why that's something that I really work with with my clients is why are you recovering what does recovery look like because it's hard to get to a place that you have no idea like where it is you're going you know if you're gonna go to um, say you're trying to go to um, El Corazon, a restaurant in downtown, right? You're not just gonna type into Siri, like, Siri, take me to a restaurant. Like, okay, there are how many restaurants in my town? I could end up anywhere, uh, but I have a specific restaurant that I want to go to. You have a specific place that you want to go to. You wanna go to this place of recovered. Um, and so you need to 
And so you need to have a clear idea of where it is you are going so you can work towards that direction. So doing a lot of this work of really finding out, okay, who do I want to be around food? How do I want to feel in my body? Uh, what is recovery going to look like? Knowing, of course, that you cannot like know everything and how exactly you're going to feel when you're recovered because a lot of stuff will surprise you and you're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that I could be someone that wasn't fixated on how many calories I ate. Like Some things are sort of like out of reach in our head for a little bit, but really getting yourself to play with that idea of like, what is it like just like waking up and not worrying about what I'm going to eat? What is it like not looking at the caloric uh, density foods or, you know, looking at the calories behind the label, really, really playing that in your mind and sort of creating this avatar is really helpful. And when you feel those times of, ah, I don't know if I want to move forward, I'm getting complacent in my recovery, having that moment of remembering what it is that you are wanting, the freedom that you are really desiring, the... Um, the peace of mind, the just the clarity, the groundness, the health, like really getting clear on what it is that you want um, so that that can sort of help be a drive to recover. Now, I do want to say eating disorders are very complicated, guys, um, and I'm not giving like a one size fits all sort of approach here, but I just want to say that motivation is not enough, though, in recovery. Um, if we waited until we were motivated, trust me, none of us would get to this place of recovery because the eating disorder is never going to be motivated to eat more food. It's never going to be motivated to, um, you know, sleep in instead of go to that hit class. Like, waiting for that motivation is not the smartest thing. It's really, again, just staying committed to, I'm going to do this despite the fact that it's fearful, despite the fact that it makes me uncomfortable, despite the fact that I don't want to do it. And that's what recovery is. Again, it's that commitment. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And I'm not waiting for the time where I feel like I'm ready to recover. I'm literally making that commitment to cover right now. I heard this quote the other day and I really liked it on Instagram. It said, it's harder to do something 98% than to do it 100%. Because when you're doing something, even just 98%, you are allowing a uh, space for thinking, for your thoughts to come in. You're allowing for a lot of decision fatigue. So if I go, for example, um, I'm not going to exercise at all for this month. Um, if you are 98% committed to that goal, you're leaving in that room for you wake up in the morning and ooh, well maybe I'll go on a little run right now. Maybe it'll only be 30 minutes. Ah, oh, no, should I? No, I really should not do it. Um, okay, tomorrow I'm going to go on the run. Then tomorrow you wake up and should I not? Should I? Okay, I'm just going to go on a run. Okay, I went on an hour run, whatever. Tomorrow I won't. But then tomorrow comes like, oh, maybe I should. Do you get it? Like you are leaving room for you to sort of like fight against this commitment and be like, well, I'm not 100% in. I'm still sort of just on this fence of like, I'm going to slowly ease back my training and see how that goes. But then what happens is you're really overthinking so much of it and trying to compensate and do all these things instead of just being like, I'm committed one month, no exercise, boom, doing it. It's sort of easier to do that. So every morning you wake up and you go, should I exercise? You go, nope, no. It was an easy, it was an easy decision. I already made that decision. I'm not doing it for this month. When you leave that like, I'm just going to exercise less, then you wake up, should I exercise? Um, let me think about this. Yeah, maybe I'll do a little, maybe I'll do this. <sighs> That's going to keep you stuck. So making that 100% commitment to this is what I'm doing. I think it's a lot easier. Again, every single person is different. I'm telling you what's worked for me. I'm giving you lots of food for thought. For you to think, hey, is that something that I need to do? Do I need to stop sort of going half into all of this and just actually commit that I'm going to do it? Because if you're like half into this like process of I'm going to gain weight and eat more foods, trust me, it's it's not going to happen. You're going to, if you do gain some weight, you're going to go up and down and up and down because there's going to be some days, some weeks where you're like, oh no, I can't do this and I'm going to restrict and I'm going to lose weight and then you're going to be like, oh no, I'm going to do it and you're going to gain weight and it's going to be this yo-yo effect, trust me. Personally, I think it's, for me, it was way better to just be like, I'm committed, I'm doing it. Every single time that I had a really good sort of jump forward in my recovery were those times that I was extremely, extremely committed. Those times where I was like, I know this sucks. I know I like exercising. I know I like, you know, um, 
skipping breakfast. I know that's what I liked. But I was like, no, but I'm really committed in rewiring my brain here. I'm really committed in nourishing my body and I'm just not going to do this. And those are the times where I learned so much, so much. Um, so hopefully this gave you just a little bit more of that inspiration for you guys to just sort of go on this journey and to really um, get clear on what it is that you're trying to accomplish and those goals that you're going to set for yourself. It really helps because again, if you're sort of half-assing it and being like, I'm going to gain weight sometime in the next, you know, year. I tried to gain weight, honestly, tried to gain weight. Um, this is what I'd always say. I'd be like, oh, I shouldn't buy pants right now because what if, you know, I gain weight? And it was always sort of just this like, wanting to gain weight, wanting to recover, but never actually taking the steps to. Now I laugh at it because I'm like, Chloe, if you wanted to gain weight, it's the easiest thing to gain weight. Like, the issue wasn't you couldn't gain weight physically, it was mentally you weren't there yet. But I'd always be like, I oh, know I'm doing this and I'm, I'm gonna gain weight. But I never set goals for me. I never said like, okay, well, by this time, like, I want to gain, like, five more pounds. By this time, I want to be, you know, at this, like, weight. And I didn't, um, I didn't ever set a cap for me. That was really important. If I went above it, great. Um, it was just, like, minimum. I'm really staying committed to, like, I want to gain this much weight. And that is the times, again, where I actually was able to then put on the weight and get back to a healthy size and shape for my body. Um, this body that I now feel ridiculously healthy in and super strong. And I'm not just saying that, guys. Like, it is insane the difference I feel being in this recovered body um, versus being in my quasi-recovery body or, of course, in my very anorexic body. So anyways, this is way too long now. It was just going to be a quick pop-in video, but I hope that that was really helpful. If you guys have any questions, please um, either email me, contact.flowwithchloe at gmail.com. That way we can have a more private conversation if you want to um, sort of talk more privately, or you can, of course, just like leave a comment down below and I'll answer those. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.